welcome to the Real Traveller Amigos Halloween Special. In a woodland area outside of Clapham Village, there, is a num there are numerous reports of strange happenings that draw from the folk history of the area. It's often discussed and embarked upon by the lack of wildlife in Clapham Wood in particular, the stillness of the air and the peculiar lack of birdsong. The woods are left with an uncanny silence rarely found anywhere else on the South Downs. Four deaths have occurred either in or close to the woods and have since become part of the law surrounding it. The first such case was that of Police Constable Peter Goldsmith in 1972. Goldsmith, 46, was a former Royal Marine Commando and an experienced rambler who was in excellent physical condition. He was last seen in June that year walking across the downs and carrying a large hole. His body was found six months later, hidden in a patch of thick bramble. In August 1975, pensioner Leon Foster was found in the woods by a couple searching for a lost horse three weeks after his wife had reported him missing. And then the Reverend Harry Neal Snelling, the retired vicar of Clapham Parish, disappeared on All Hallows' Eve in 1978 while returning home from the Downs from a dental appointment in Goring. His body was eventually found three years later by a Canadian tourist who only informed the police of his discovery after he left the country. The murdered woman was Miss Gillian Matthews, a 37-year-old divorcee and a homeless schizophrenic who went missing in September 1981. Her body was discovered six weeks later in a state of partial undress, having been raped and strangled. No one was ever charged with her murder. It wasn't until 1987, however, that anyone offered an explanation that attempted to tie these desperate events together. In their book, The Demonic Connection, Toyin Newton, Charles Walker and Alan Brown alleged that these woods were being used for rituals by a satanic cult calling herself the Friends of Hectate. Hectate is a triple-headed goddess of the Greek underworld, a central figure in modern Wicca. Not only unexplained deaths, but there have been reports of UFO sightings locally, in particular locally at Chantonbury Ring and Cisbury Ring, two historic hills with Neolithic flint mines and Iron Age hill forts. Hello YouTube! We're out on a camp today, tonight, with Tom from Two Outdoors. Steve from Scoutman Steve. Uh, we're going into Clapham Woods, supposedly haunted woods. People have died or bodies have been found in here. Just leaving the church behind us. And as you can see, we've got a lot of stuff with us. <laughs> so we're going to carve some pumpkins. Uh, well, chill out and see if we can get any ghosts on film or anything like that be pretty cool so keep this short and sweet and we'll see you in the woods so here we are around this bit of opening in the trees a lot of hazel around looks like it was coppiced a long time ago and uh trying to find an open spot really without overhanging trees that could potentially fall on us the weather's not supposed to be very great tonight so right we set camp up today with Tom he is marshmallow <laughs> the heavens have just opened the remains of the fire is slowly going out Steve's over there. Steve's uh, set up in the OEX Salamander. Same one me and Tom have got in our last videos. Tom, what are you in? Uh, I've got the Pro Action Type Cool. And I'm in the Van Gogh Style 100 again. I've never really done it in the rain, so it's a good test if it's waterproof or not. Uh, 
uh, some onions, some carrots, oxo cube. And we're gonna carve some pumpkins in a minute, so I'm gonna put a bit of pumpkin in there and then boil it up for a little while. Just uh, should be right, even if it doesn't cook through properly. Who cares? It's all raw and warm, don't know. And as if by magic, <laughs> a pumpkin will appear. Da -da -da! <laughs> it's a monster pumpkin. A monster pumpkin from Sainsbury's. Better that they're from Norfolk. There's no fucking way they're from Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> Alright, let's give this a carve up as well. Yeah. <laughs> Scary Jack O' Lantern. <laughs> Goodness, give it a try. Let it cool down for a minute. Here we are. Here's the soup. Try shoot, a bit shoot. of pumpkin first. Mmm. Oh, look at the size of that fly that's in there. It's got fly in there. Oh, mate, that's monster. <laughs> Yeah, this food's actually not too bad. Yeah, we got a trio of pumpkins. My one, Steve's one. There's Tom's one. Which one do you think's best? Comment below. Oh lads, you know what? I've just eaten some of that pumpkin. I don't really feel very well. Again, <laughs> we've rigged up we some sort of shelter, shelter out of Steve's poncho. He's uh, kindly made us a fire, uh, feather stick. Uh, inside of that's quite dry, so it should get it going. Kind of just leaving it up to Steve at the minute. You can tell we know what we're doing. We're, we're me and Luke are experts, <laughs> aren't we? Rain is. Is that Peter Birch? It is. Yes. I, fa I found a yeah, birch bark. I think I just chucked it in there. Very nice. That's my two bobs of it. That's all I know. Yeah. Birch bark's good. You go down to the woods today, you're sure you're going to get wet. You're wet, you're wet, too. Really wet. Nice. Beautiful. There you go, Bush. We've just got a swamp here. It's <laughs> in down there. Where my feet have been. Swamp here it is. So, yeah, that's where all the rain ran off as well. Oh, I'll set another fly. campsite has got slightly bigger thanks to our saviour our lord and our our bushcraft guide steve he's made an awesome fire for us put the this tarp up or his poncho up to protect it from the rain uh got a load of wood that he's cut up there for us so thank you mate and uh he's got the first two burgers on for himself he's got wagyu ones We've just got normal ones, unfortunately, so... I've got chilli cheese as well. Oh, and chilli oh, cheese. You're going off! <laughs> <laughs> no. You've got ketchup as well, so I've got a barbecue. <laughs> I've got burger sauce. So, yeah, we're going to put our burgers on in a minute. 
Tom's demolished his burger already. Amazing. They're pretty good. We've got two more on the go. Not really much else to say. Get a 10 out of 10 on trip advisor for this burger, I think. Didn't even have ketchup and it was amazing. <laughs> Time has come. Gonna. I have a go at this bit of cake in this box that says cake. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's like two cameras, well three actually on this. <laughs> oh, wicked. Wow. Look at that. That's lovely, that, isn't it? So my mum made that this morning. I'm going to get a zoom that. Look at that for a cake. That's uh, royal icing that she rolled out this morning. Uh. What have I knocked over behind me? I can't see. Oh shit. Oh. The first cut is the, the deepest. deepest. Copyright. Baby, I know. I apologise to any diabetics watching. <laughs> oh, Ooh, look, look at that. Right. Buttercream and jam. Myself a slice. Lovely jubbly. Get that down, yeah. Get your laughing gear around that girl. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. What a lovely bit of cake. She needs to go on Britain's Got Talent because she's got some talent. That is decent, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Right. That's us in bed. Ten past one in the morning. Didn't see or hear anything in the woods. So uh, time to get a good night's sleep. We'll see you in the morning. Ta-ta. Morning. Had a really good night's sleep. It was relatively dry through the night. Now it's like raining just as I want to get up. It's about 8 o'clock now. I'm gonna get out of bed. See the lads pack up, have some breakfast. Right, this is the setup I didn't get to show you yesterday. It was too dark. So that's Steve's poncho that we set up to cover the fire, which worked wonders. Having said that, we set it up and then it stopped raining for a while. <laughs> uh, Although it lashed it down this morning. Yeah, this morning it wasn't great. Everything was pretty dry. Oh, yeah. Again. Uh, that's the tarp we set up that we sat under. Steve's just... Oh, that sounded wicked. <laughs> Steve's shooting pumpkins with his catapult thing. That someone made for him. Carl, yeah. Carl Hazard Snowden. Have a look at that. Haz Hazard Outdoors. He made it for me when I last met up. That's a pretty cool bit so of kit. They're, they're all bang into their catties. He won't like me using pebbles though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're, they're a bit more ergonomic, aren't they? When it comes to the woodlands. Straight in. Took his mouth out on that side. <laughs> <laughs> It's got a cleft so palette now. It's a much bigger target though, the can, cans are a lot harder. Yeah, cans are harder. There's a can on there from this morning's practice. <laughs> right, this is Steve's uh, setup with his tarp and salamander bivy. He uh, liked it like yeah, we did. Right, yeah, <clears throat> so it's a teeny bit of condensation, but you expect it with hoop, hoop bivvies, don't you? Yeah. You've got, you know, you're not. I've not known of any that hasn't got any whatsoever. Plenty of room in there though. 
and yeah. get your bag inside Definitely as well. Be using it for some coastal ones, I think. Yeah. Like Good bit of kit. Yeah. Well worth the money at the 20, seventy quid. 80, yeah, 70, 80 quid. Something yeah. Like. We've got brother Tom over here. <laughs> it is what you got. Pro oh, action tent. Tiger paws. One, yeah. And these are uh, fabulous night's sleep. No night terrors tonight. No, last oh, no. night. <laughs> Could not believe it. Yeah, it was alright. It was something screaming though last night. Definitely. <laughs> that was just the porn you was watching, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no, chickens don't scream. <laughs> and then uh, there's my setup, which was actually a good night's sleep. I I thought it might be a little bit wet inside, but it was bone dry. So it's always a bonus. Have we bought tents? Um, weird, spooky things during the night. Not really, nothing at all. We heard, or well, someone heard a scream, I think, didn't you? You say a scream? Or a fox. Oh, fox. Yeah. One of the, ah, one of them noises. Uh, I heard an owl, but yeah. Considering there's not meant to be any wildlife in this weekend, it was weird that we heard that. Yeah, no, there's no, no morning chorus this morning. No birds. It is, it's eerily dead in here, isn't it? Yeah. That's, I think that's the only really scary thing about it is that there's just like no life that can thrive in here. It's weird. I think when the wind stops as well, it's like it's just so. It's it was so, so still, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it sort of comes and goes in like ferocious belts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that wind we had last night when we got here though, the trees were like hanging on for dear yeah, life, weren't they? That one up there because it's a bit of rickety rickety, <laughs> which I'm attached to. <laughs> Right guys, that's us done. Just packing up the final couple of things. That's where we had the uh, the tarp up there with the fire pit. I'm just gonna scatter some shit around. Swamp. Uh, yeah, swamp down there now. Steve was here, I was there, Tom was there, so we're leaving no trace. Uh, don't be a tosser, yeah. Uh, thanks guys for coming with me, for joining me on this camp. Uh, nice to finally meet Steve as well. Um, like I say, if you haven't got these on YouTube yet, Scoutman Steve, Tom Outdoors. Go like, share, follow, watch the videos, all that jargon. I've got one thing to say. Steve's uh, bushcraft knowledge was uh, very handy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wait for it, wait for it, I haven't finished. <laughs> Someone I probably put... shouldn't have said that. I put my foot in it. <laughs> ah! Who put 20p in the comedian? <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. See you later. The South Downs is a long range of rolling chalk hills that borders Winchester in the west and stretches for over 70 miles eastwards across counties to the chalk cliff faces of Beachy Head in Eastbourne. Holding national park status, its farmland, dry valleys and steep hills are scattered with thick wooded areas and dotted throughout small villages and towns nestled among the green landscape. The village of Clapham sits quietly alongside these hills. The church in the village was built in the 12th century and dedicated to St Mary in 1406. The local farmland of Lee Farm acted as a leper colony in the 13th century and the surrounding area with its high vantage points played important roles in invasions from the Saxons and Romans and was used in armoured vehicle training during World War II. Clapham Church was built in the 12th century replacing an earlier Norman building. Although Clapham appears in the Doomsday Book, the church itself is not mentioned the earliest document which names the church of the Blessed Virgin Mary at Clapham is dated 1405. The church is small, with plain exterior. It has a low-pitched roof on the tower. It used to have a spire, but this was removed in 1790. The church has undergone many changes over centuries. You can just see the last remains of the older Norman church in the walled-in window on the north side of the nave. The only remaining 12th century structure is in the south wall of the tower. The outside walls of 13th century.
on the inside the chancel is not in a straight line with the nave one theory goes that it was a deliberate and was supposed to intimidate the angle of Christ's head on the cross. An extremely ancient gravestone with a cross carved on it, which may be 12th century or even earlier, has been removed from the churchyard to the wall of the vestry.